So, uh, Stefan Dimitrov is a board member and communications coordinator at CAA in Bulgaria, a non-profit animal protection organization founded in uh, 2017. As a student of computer science, he has con considerable knowledge in digital tools that have the potential to inform our decisions, save time and increase our impact as active organizations. Stefan will present a selection of useful tools in a brief overview of what each does, how it's used and why you properly need it. His talk is called the Animal Rights NGO Digital Started Pack. So welcome Dimitrov. All right, thank you. Um, thank you everyone for joining my talk. Mm. And yeah, I think we can start. So um, the goal of this presentation is basically to, um, yeah, have uh, bring in one place all of the different tools that we as uh, animal rights organizations might need and might find useful because the experience that we had um, as a new and growing organization was um, very random. We had, uh, we came across by chance different tools. We saw different organizations doing and using different uh, different apps and programs. And it was, yeah, it was completely random what we found. Um, but it was nice because we found stuff that we, that solved problems that we were getting used to that we didn't think could be solved in the ways that the, the tools I'll be showing um, help to solve. So I thought it would be good and useful for new organizations, especially to have like a crash course to the things I think I find most useful among the tools that we found and that, that uh, we're using. And also at the end of the presentation, I'll talk about um, a solution to a problem that we couldn't find elsewhere, which was we wanted to host our own petitions and have a place to store all of the signatures from our petitions and synchronize it with our um, newsletter platform. And we couldn't find a solution for that, so we made our own. And hopefully, if you like what we've done, we can um, yeah, give it to you so you can use it as well. So without further ado, um, yeah, I'll start with the free tools because it turns out that, uh, like I said, as a charity, especially you can get a lot of stuff for free that is usually paid. Um, or you can get stuff that uh, is generally paid with a discount at least. But the things I'll be showing are either completely free no matter what you are, or free if you're an NGO. Um, and yeah, let's dive right in. These are the ones I'll start with. Maybe some of you already know some of them, maybe not. Um, I guess Slack is most popular from, from these here, but yeah, Slack, Trello, Streak, Flickr, and Canva are the ones I'll go through. And uh, we'll start out with Slack. I thought that um, the online format of the conference this year was actually super useful for a presentation like this because I can just share my screen and show you in practice uh, what it is and how it works. So I'll just uh, do that. Um, this is Slack. Basically, Slack is a uh, online chat platform, which is designed especially for organizations. So unlike Messenger and Viber and WhatsApp and other uh, chat programs that you might know, um, Slack is built for businesses, built for organizations, and it deals with um, discussing numerous different topics uh, and message clutter and message overload and spam super nicely. Um, and the way it does that is that um, uh, you, each organization has its own workspace. So once you create Slack for your organization, you will get this. Um, and your workspace is a space where only people from your organization that you let in uh, can join. And within your workspace, you have uh, different channels. So you can make as many channels as you want. And the concept of a channel is that 
every channel is basically a topic. So what people can do is just join the channels um, or the topics that they're interested in and follow the messages there and not have to, like if you have only one chat, for example, where you discuss everything with everyone, that quickly becomes super inefficient as soon as you have more than two things to discuss. Um, so that's one way Slack deals with this um, through channels where you join whatever you find interesting. Um, and also through um, threads, which is I made this demo channel here to demonstrate what threads are. Basically, if you have a channel in which two people post something and two discussions start going simultaneously instead of having um, the two discussions flowing through each other and it having it being horrible to follow, um, you can just reply to a message beneath it, like a comment in a thread. And you can reply to the other message in another thread below it. So this makes it super easy to this makes everything super ordered and super easy to follow numerous discussions within the same topic. Um, Slack also has apps for Android and iOS, and it has um, a desktop app, which is what I'm showing right now. And you can also open it through the browser. Um, and I think that's about it for Slack. Mm, moving on. I'll go to Trello. If Slack is the single place that you need to for communication within your organization for chat and for video calls as well, then Trello is uh, the only thing you would need for um, keeping track of tasks within your organization easily. Um, the way Trello works is that uh, similar to Slack, you it you can divide it by topics. So in Trello, you have boards. These are the boards that I'm in. And each board is on a specific topic. For example, this is a board on one of our campaigns. This is a board for coordinating the tasks on our blog. This is for our social media, for events, for volunteers, and so on. So I made this demo, demo board um, just to show what it does. Um, and basically every board, when you open it, has this basic structure. It has lists that you can create as many as you like of. And each list has um, as many cards as you want. And basically the idea is that you can make whatever you want in terms of a system, but the idea is sort of that um, each list is like a group of tasks and each card is a specific task. Um, and then when you make a card, just add it to a list. When you make a card, uh, every card has, you can add lots of things to, to a card or to a task. Um, you can add images to it. You can add uh, due dates or deadlines. You can add checklists. Uh, you can write comments on it. You can write descriptions. And you can also add um, people to a card. And people can add themselves so that you can see at a glance um, if a task is being handled by anyone, if there's something that no one is doing, um, you can see how things are going. For example, this deadline here, the fact that it's yellow means it's today um, and it needs to happen soon, stuff like that. And you can also um, add labels to cards so that you can color code them like this and have it be even more uh, easy to look at at a glance. Um, and Trello has a lot of features. It's relatively intuitive to, to start off with, to be able to use it. And I can't go through them all, but suffice it to say, it's super powerful. And if you need a way to keep track of your tasks as a group, you can just start with this and it'll be, you can basically use it forever. I haven't encountered any significant problems with it. And a lot of organizations use it anyway. All right, so that's enough about Trello. One last thing, it also has Android and iOS apps. Um, but yeah, that's it about Trello. The next thing I'll be 
talking about a streak, which is uh, something completely different. Streak is a plugin for Microsoft Edge and for Google Chrome browsers. And what it does is it um, gets added to your Gmail. When you add it to Microsoft Edge or Google Chrome and then open your Gmail, um, you get streak, which is, uh, you can see it here. And what it does is, firstly, um, and I think the coolest thing that it does is uh, email tracking, which is basically a scene for emails. Like I'm sure you know how in Messenger and Viber and so on, you have an indicator that shows you when the other side has seen your message. Streak basically adds that for emails. And you can see, for example, the last email that I sent here about care um, has been viewed three times in total, three hours ago. Uh, usually it can tell you the location, but uh, not right now, not for this uh, email. And it can also tell you the um, where it was open. So this was open in the Gmail app. It can tell you if it's on, been on a phone or on a computer, when exactly it's been opened and so on. So it's kind of creepy, but it's also useful if you have correspondence with corporate executives, for example, and you want to see how much interest they have in the topic, if they're opening it all the time, or they've opened it once three weeks ago and they didn't care after that. It's just nice to have more information like that. Um, streak would be worth it if that's, even if that's all it could do, but it can also do something else, um, which is sending mass emails. So in the free version, it used to be that you can send 500 messages, but they made the free version more limited, so you can only send 50. Um, but it's still useful. What it does is, uh, with Streak, you can send individual emails to up to 50 people um, without writing 50 individual emails. So. Um, I'm not sure how I can move this thing. Okay. Um, so what it does is next to CC and BCC, you can see that this mail merge thing uh, appeared, which when you click it, you have the option to upload a CSV, which is basically an Excel, an Excel sheet. And this Excel sheet is basically this one. Um, and you just specify the email of the recipient, the name of the recipient, for example, the company name of the recipient and whatever else you want for up to 50 people. And then when you upload it here, like I just did, um, you can write a subject like you would a normal email and you can use as variables the uh, different columns that you have here. So you have name and company name is what we've added. So I would write hello, insert variable name. And I know you work at um, company name, for example. And then I would say, yeah, doesn't matter. And when you mouse over any of the recipients, you it shows you what that person will receive. So it replaces the, the recipient with the, the name of the person and the name of the company. And then you just click send and it automatically sends all of the emails to all of the recipients. Um, yeah, so that is also nice. Streak also has apps for iOS and Android, um, but um, they're not very useful. You can't do do this in them. So that is about it for streak. Um, and the next thing, the next two things I'll be talking about are more visual, more design oriented. Uh, and the first one is Flickr. So Flickr is um, a website for uploading photos and videos. Um, the cool thing about Flickr is that um, you can, of course, you can get the pro version for, as an NGO for free, uh, which you usually can't. And with the pro version, you have 
um, unlimited space. So that's the first cool thing. You can upload as many photos and videos, as many gigabytes as you want. It's completely unlimited. And aside from that, it's also um, super nice the way they've designed it because it was made specifically for videos and photos. So you can or organize all of your materials easily. Um, you can sort them in albums, you can preview them. Um, everything can be public, so you can send, for example, um, this is an album from with photos from an event that we did. And for example, you want to send this to your media, so you would just copy a link to your album and send it if they want to pick out photos themselves. Um, and yeah, it's super easy to look at all the photos, preview them, maybe this is a photo you like for some reason. And you can easily choose what sort of quality you want to download it in. Um, it shows you the uh, rights that uh, you can use this image with. So when you upload an image, you can select um, whether you want people to be using this or not. Uh, what we do is just do Creative Commons with attribution. So anyone can use it as long as they say it's from us. Um, but you can also do other stuff like just say all rights reserved no one can use this um but yeah it's uh easy to show what you want people to do with this photo and you can upload video uh, videos and photos from investigations from events from anything and that is basically it for Flickr. and the last one of these five is canva which is um, I would describe it as Photoshop, but free if you're a charity and um, much, much easier to use than Photoshop and also online. So you don't have to download or install anything. You just go to canva.com and you can start designing. Um, what you get as an NGO is 10 free accounts in Canva and that makes it also super easy to collaborate on designs because all of the 10 accounts that you get are part of your organization. So when someone in your organization creates a design, you can see that design here, for example, that what I clicked here was uh, team social media in our organization. And when someone in your organization makes a design, you can just click here and you see all the designs. And for example, a colleague of yours makes something that you want to reuse some design that you saw um, or you want to modify. So just go here and you click their design and you can either make a copy or just edit it directly. Um, yeah, and you can do whatever you want, which makes it super easy to collaborate in that way. Also, you don't need to, you very rarely need to upload or download any photos. Everything is built in. Um, if you go to photos here, you can just search for a photo that you want to use, for example, mink, and just click on it. And now you have a photo of a mink in your design. Um, there are also these elements thing, which uh, is pretty unique for Canva. I don't think, I mean, you can't really compare Photoshop to Canva on this. Um, but it has, for example, if you want some leaves, uh, for example, you can just have leaves here. Or if you want uh, some nice looking arrows. You can type an arrow and you get a whole list of, of stuff. Um, or yeah, a pig, hearts, whatever you want. Um, and of course, if you have photos that um, aren't publicly accessible, like in the um, search engine of Canva, you can also upload photos for use in your organization. Like for example, photos from investigations or photos from um, from events you've done. Um, like this, for example, is a folder of photos of um, foxes. And if you need a photo of a fox, you just open that, click it, and now you have a photo of a fox to use in your design. And yeah, there are also templates. It has a lot of features and it tries to make design super easy and fast. So I can't recommend this enough. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, you can also, I'll try to leave some more time at the end. Um, 
for anything you might have. And the last thing that I want to show in terms of tools, um, which I think is the most useful of all of these, is um, G Suite, which is basically Google's package with services for businesses to support their work, to um, make collaboration easier, and so on. And what you get with G Suite um, is first off having your emails at your domain in, in Gmail, like I showed mine uh, previously, which is, um, yeah, for Open Drive, doesn't matter. Um, as you can see, this is the extension at KaiBG, which is our website. Uh, and I'm using it in, in Gmail as a Google account. So that's one thing you get um, because Gmail is much better in terms of an interface for email than the default solution you probably get um, if you host your emails yourself. You also get 30 gigabytes of Drive, of Google Drive, for every user that you, cre you create um, at your domain, which you can create as many users as you want for as many people as you want. And um, these 30, 30 gigabytes are twice as much. I think you get 15 gigabytes if you just make a normal Gmail account. Um, and what Google Drive is, is basically, you probably already know this, but um, Google Drive is like a cloud, um, storage cloud is what it is. Um, so instead of having stuff on your hard drive and having to upload and download stuff when you want to send them to someone, you just have a Google Drive, which has, again, folders, and the folders have files in them, and so on. Um, and something else which is super nice with Google Drive in general is the built-in editors for Word and Excel files. Um, like, for example, if you want to, um, this spreadsheet, for example, um, uh, is our merchandise. This is how we process merchandise orders. Um, and for example, I can edit the notes on this uh, on this order while someone else is editing the same file and editing the notes on this order or editing something else. And I can see it while other people are editing. Um, or we can write a document together, maybe a press release or something. And um, yeah, it just makes it super easy to collaborate. You don't have to edit something in Word or Excel and then upload it and download it and upload it again and all back and forth. This makes it much easier. Um, but this you have in normal drive as well. Um, but something else that you get with G Suite is uh, something called shared drives, which are, as the name implies, uh, drives that are shared between multiple Google accounts. And you can create as many shared drives as you want. You can add as many people as you want to every shared drive. And a shared drive, unlike your personal drive, um, isn't tied to any specific Google account. And what's even cooler is completely unlimited. So you have basically an infinite amount of gigabytes. You can upload as much as you want here. Um, so you don't have to worry about storage ever again. The only drawback is that you can't share folders uh, with people outside of your shared drive. With your personal drive, you can share folders um, with anyone. Uh, just create a link and then send it to someone and he can open it and see what's inside, even if he doesn't have a Gmail account. But with shared drives, you can't. Um, you can only share files. And to share a folder, it can only be done with someone who is already in in your drive, in your shared drive. Uh, but yeah, you can share files uh, like you would in a normal drive. And the last awesome thing about um, G Suite or Google for nonprofits is uh, that you also get free ads, Google ads for up to $10,000 per month. Not in every country, but uh, in a lot, you get something called Google Ad Grants, which is, yeah, $10,000 worth of advertisements for free 
every month. And that is it for G Suite. Um, those were a lot of tools. I know you're probably like this right now, but we're almost done. Um, I'll be continuing with the second part of the presentation now, which is the petition platform that we made to host our own petitions. And what it has is um, it offers you name, email, and phone collection. It can automatically sync the, um, the signatures that people give on, on petitions if they decide that they want to receive newsletters from you um, or like if they select that option when they sign a petition, it will synchronize their data with your newsletter platform. Um, currently, it does that with MailerLite, which is the one that we found cheapest and with um, enough features. So it's built for MailerLite right now. But if you're not sending newsletters or not collecting emails for newsletters right now, you should definitely start uh, because it's basically one of the most important things for sustainable fundraising outside of grants. Um, and the platform that we made um, supports that basically. You can make petitions and when people sign them, their emails automatically get, edit, get added to your newsletter list. Um, the platform also has a graphic interface, so you don't have to code a lot or almost at all. Um, it does help to know some HTML and CSS, but it's much easier to find someone who can do that than to uh, build a petition from scratch. And mostly once you get a petition up and running and make it like a template to make new petitions, you basically just duplicate it, change some pictures, change some text, change some colors, and you have a new petition. So it's uh, very easy for people that have no experience in coding. Um, and last slide before I show it to you in practice. Um, the structure is basically this. Um, there is the petition platform itself, which is um, the place where we create the actual website of the petition. So this, for example, is one of our petitions. This is another. And the petition platform is the place where we create these, edit these, uh, put the images in the text, the styles, the colors. Um, and it allows you to type in your, your name, your email address, phone number, and so on, and sign the petition. And that's all that this does. Um, then you have the signature database, which is a separate thing. Uh, and that is where the signatures from the petitions in the petition platform go. Uh, so when someone signs a petition, for example, signs this one or signs this one, uh, all of these signatures go to here, which is the, uh, the signature database. And what you can do here is, like you can see who's signed your petitions and who signed which petitions. Um, I won't be scrolling down because I don't wanna show people's information, but yeah, this is the programmer that made this. Um, this is me. And yeah, currently we have 10,000 people that have signed one of our petitions. Um, so you can look at the people that have signed all your stuff in this database. And this is where the signatures go. And the other thing that this does, which is the more useful thing is um, it synchronizes all of these people um, with MailerLite, which is our platform for sending newsletters. And it also synchronizes the information about which petitions they've signed, because maybe you wanna know, uh, maybe you wanna send a newsletter to people that have only signed your uh, FER petition, or you want to send an email to people who have signed one petition, but not another. So you can, um, the newsletter platform has all this information and you can use it. Um, and the signature database synchronizes itself with, with the platform. So it's all up to date. And if someone decides to unsubscribe or decides to change their name or their phone number through your um, newsletter preferences, the database will also receive that information and uh, the info will update here. 
and uh, in terms of the petition platform, uh, how the editing works, this is the last thing I'll show. Uh, the editing of a petition works like this. You have the petition address and you type slash administration. You log in. And once you do that, you click here and this is a list of all the petitions you have. So right now we have three petitions and uh, you can click to manage, for example, one of them. And this is what it looks like. So if I open it again, um, the way it works is that it's divided in sections. So this, for example, with the uh, fox, the dark, within the dark background is the first section. Uh, this is a second section, the third section. And in the editing interface, um, this is again, the left side of the first section, the right side, the actual form where you sign. Um, then there is this, which is the second section. Yeah, I think you get the idea. And to you can move the sections up and down, you can reorder them, you can delete them, you can add new sections. And if you click here, you can edit a section. Um, so yeah, you need a bit of coding. This, this is HTML, but um, if, for example, you have your petition, it's done and it's uh, it's working and everything's fine. But for for example, you need to change something in the text. You don't need to edit any files. You don't need to upload anything. You can just open the administration panel and go here. And if, for example, here I want to change something, I just edit this text and click Save. Um, and with photos, it's uh, even easier. So these sections, for example, is is this here, where the photos are like that. Um, and if I click Edit, um, I can, for example, change the image here and select one of the images I've uploaded. And again, hit Save. So that is it, I believe. Um, yeah, we still have some time. So I think now is the time for questions. Can somebody ask for this uh, last platform you use? Is it uh, uh, www.caae.bg? Um, the platform is something that we made. So it runs here or this mm -hmm. is one of the petitions that um, that is on the platform that we made, but um, we made it ourselves. So it's not available for like on the internet if you Google it, mm -hmm. but um, if you liked it and you would be interested in knowing more about it and maybe using it, um, you can write me an email. This is my address um, and I would be super glad to explain more. Okay, thank you. And also we have another question. Uh, what tool do you use or can you recommend for administering your, your donors? Donor administration, right. Um, that is a very good question because actually uh, when we were starting out and we were making this, um, like the petition platform and the signature database because they're two separate things, um, we made this, which is called a, it's a CRM system, basically is what this is. Um, a system for managing donors, for example, is called the CRM system. Mm -hmm. um, and we made this because we needed something to, some place to store all of our uh, signatures, the people that signed our petitions. And we also thought of extending it and making it so that um, if someone makes a donation through PayPal, for example, or through Stripe, um, this thing receives that information and marks it for the person. For example, how often they've donated, when was the last time they donated, how much they've donated. Um, but what we will actually be using, be doing is we will start using Salesforce by the end of the year, mm -hmm. which is um, 
basically a professional CRM system. Um, yeah, I don't think I can show it right now, but it's sort of like this, but uh, it has many more options and it's much more versatile. And uh, it is also paid normally, but for NGOs, you can get it for free. And what we'll be doing is modifying our petition platform to work with Salesforce. And this will happen. It'll probably all be done by the end of the year at the latest. And we'll make the petition platform work with uh, Salesforce. We'll integrate PayPal with it, um, Stripe, and another platform that is specifically for Bulgaria, uh, payments in Bulgaria. But yeah, for now, that is the, that is the plan. I think Salesforce is the best thing you can, you can find on the market for donor management. Yeah, we have uh, it also because I'm a fundraiser, so we have it also, and it's uh, way too too good, mm. I think. Um, um, there is also a little. You may add a little information to your donors, like uh, they prefer email or telephone or uh, things like that, and uh, open open for anything you need. So mm -hmm. it, it's very very good, and um, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And also you can make it so that it synchronizes. For example, if Salesforce receives information from PayPal and from other platforms for donations that were made by a specific person, you can also make it so that Salesforce sends this information to your newsletter platform. And then for us, that would be MailerLite. Um, and then you can target your newsletters, for example, to people who have donated $50 in total or who have donated in the last three months or whatever. Yeah, yeah, and also it's, uh, um, I don't know how, but MailChimp and Salesforce is okay to cooperate. I think my colleague working on that, actually. And we have another question um, uh, about MailChimp. Uh, have you ever used MailChimp? Uh, what do you think about this platform, the positive and negative about it? Uh, we have used MailChimp. I honestly, like its uh, interface better and uh, its functionality better, but um, the, I think it's it's quite a bit more expensive than MailerLite. That is actually yeah. the reason why we started using MailerLite um, because it seemed to have all of the features that we need um, and that we already had in MailChimp, but mm -hmm. it was much cheaper. So we just started using MailerLite instead. Mm -hmm. How it's it's very similar. Uh, Mailer can you light. Write us, write yes. us in Zoom. Thank you. That is uh, what it is. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing if um you don't want to use MailerLite if you want to use MailChimp, for example, um, but you liked the platform for creating petitions and managing petitions like this. Um, as soon as we modify the platform so that it works with Salesforce, with our Salesforce, um, it'll be sending p uh, the signatures to, to that. And mm -hmm. for example, if you also use Salesforce, you can just make your Salesforce to synchronize with MailChimp which is probably easier to do. Um, yeah. So yeah, that also works. Okay, um, we have, yeah, somebody just asked for, uh, uh, can you hand, can you add the names of the platforms and CRM in the comments of the room? Thank you. Somebody just asked for this. Uh, Joanna asked how he could join 10,000 signatures in paper in three months. <laughs> how we what? Uh, how he could join um, 10,000 signatures in paper in three months. I don't know <laughs> what is well. Uh, maybe collect 10,000 10, signatures. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it is. Um, well, we did it with... Uh, um, 
first we had to, we were looking for volunteers for a few months. Um, and we got 200 volunteers in total. Then we uh, basically had everything organized in advance. We had uh, uh, stalls, info stalls, all around the country in, in a number of cities for eight to 10 hours per day, almost every day. Um, and people, we also had the uh, uh, sheet for signatures for signing online so people could download it, print it, get signatures from their relatives and then send it by mail to us. Um, yeah, uh, if you want more information about how we organize that, uh, you can write me an email. That's my email, stefan.dimitrov at kaibg. Um, if that was your question. Uh, um, I think it, it is, it was, and we have another one. Uh, do you have any campaign success you'd like to mention? Campaign success? Um, well, we had, I think we had the uh, second largest national citizens initiative in our country to ban fur farms. Um, that was in 2018. We had 35,000 signatures on paper. Um, we got the bill submitted in September last year and we're working on that basically. I think we had a number of events that, was, that were also well covered. Um, media is definitely very interested in the topic, but we haven't like really banned fur farming yet. Um, but we're getting there, I think. It takes some time. Yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry. We're kind of new. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and somebody just asked, what is I, Leo? <laughs> oh, that is a program, a plugin for, yeah, it's a program for Windows, which uh, reminds you to blink every 10 minutes and reminds you to take a long break every 50 minutes uh, or shows you some other eye exercises like moving your eyes left to right. So, yeah, yeah um, for that. Uh, somebody asked, is Stripe an international play payment platform? It is. I'm not sure if it works in every country, but uh, it definitely works in Bulgaria and Bulgaria is pretty obscure. So it probably works in other European countries as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I can't tell you for sure if and, it works everywhere. Mm -hmm. And do you have or use any system that allows for monthly payments? Um, PayPal allows for monthly payments, Stripe also. And there's another platform that we also accept donations by, which is uh, a Bulgarian platform. Um, but apart from those, no, I think Stripe is the best from the ones that we know, because for Stripe, you don't need to have a registration to make um, a monthly payment. For PayPal, you do. You can't subscribe for monthly donations if you don't have a PayPal account, which is makes it more difficult for people, mm -hmm. which is why we're transitioning to Stripe. Okay, so not PayPal, but Stripe, yeah? Yeah, Stripe is best. Okay. Um, and Andrea say, I see you are using Ecosia. I heard that they do not really actually plant trees for every search. Do you have some thoughts of, on it? Well, uh, no, I didn't know that but I will Google it or Ecosia it later. So mm -hmm. thanks for that. Uh, yeah, okay. Your email is here. And I don't know, Joanna, uh, ask something, but I think, Joanna, maybe you can write Stefan in email and uh, talk about it. It's, the, it's about the measure 10,000 signatures on paper in three months, something I, I don't understand really. 
Okay, um, sure. Yeah. Okay, Stefan, thank you for everything. It's it's interesting every platform and to talk about. And thank you for your presentation. Sure. Uh, it, I'm interested actually because I know you're also not a super old organization. Did you know all of these things already? Uh, we have uh, we using also Slack and Trello and Canva and Canva is the best. I use it uh, for two or three years now, also for my for my another work. So Canva is the best and for NGO is free. I I think yes, it's free for NGOs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and it's, this is like oh, too much, too much. Uh, Oh, too much pictures, symbols, and everything is in there. So uh, we make um, our graphic through it. Also, I, I really like it. I really like Canva. Oh, Flickr, I I don't know for now. So we we doesn't use it. And yeah, and uh, G Suite. G Suite is also the good good one. We start mm -hmm. using the um, drives uh, for for um, for fundraising or for campaigns or um, like this. So it's it's better like this because it's some struct it has some structure now I think. But we were learning with this um, sharing and everything because sometimes. Uh, it gets uh, too too cowsy <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, with it, but I think it's uh, it's good uh, for using. Uh, and Salesforce is is the best. I I learn it so quickly and see uh, every time which I which I want to see. So it's, it's very good. Salesforce is very good. I think yes. Okay, thank you. So, uh, can uh, now invite everyone in the room A, oh, where will be the last uh, the last presentation on our care conference? If you want to join. Awesome. Uh, thank you, and thank you everyone for for joining. And I guess I'll see you in the other presentation. <laughs>